Well, welcome back to the show. We turn our attention now to Zimbabwe. Emerson Mnangagwa was elected president last August and took over from Zimbabwe's longtime leader Robert Mugabe, promising to turn around the country's troubled economy. But last month, protests over increased fuel prices resulted in a crackdown by security forces that resulted in several deaths. To discuss how the president is responding and his plans for Zimbabwe, also joining us now from London is Lloyd Sipa. He is founder of the Africa Public Policy Research Institute. And still with us from Johannesburg is journalist and news anchor Inflakle Sihuma and CGTN correspondent Angela Coppola continues with us too. Lloyd, welcome to the show. Uh, President Monongagwe has been under pressure since the recent protests. In a recent interview, he said that this was an attempt at what he called regime change, and he pointed the finger at outside interference. What is your assessment of how the president is handling this crisis? Right. Uh, let me put this uh, now. Thanks for inviting me to the show. Let me put this in context. You see, after 2017 November, there was an expectation by the citizens of Zimbabwe that uh, Emerson Nangagwa is going to be, you know, our knight in shining armor. You are saying all the right things, you know, all the proper signals, re-engagement, open for business. And so there was a lot of optimism. Fast forward to today, uh, as you refer to the first 24 um, uh, interview, there, there's a lot of pessimism. We, we, we are back to old Mugabe language, where we're talking about regime change, uh, which is a complete... Uh, 360 degree turn from what he, you, you know, he was saying in the last few months. So that is an issue. The people want to know what he, what is there that he can deliver. He wants people want jobs, uh, people want a stable economy, people want to be able to send their children to school, people want a functional, you know, economy. So we cannot have excuses, excuses, excuses. Mm -hmm. So Mugabe's uh, regime was actually characterized by one excuse after another. So we see this creeping in back into Emerson Mnangagwa's regime, and that is an issue, and the people of Zimbabwe are not buying into that. What they're saying is, if either you deliver what you promised and, and we move the country forward, and you know, they go on the street to, you know, to uh, register their displeasure. Right, Lloyd, you talk about pessimism, but I'm wondering about the efforts that he has been making to try uh, and fix some of Zimbabwe's problems. He has been calling for dialogue. Uh, he recently hosted a meeting of opposition leaders. Uh, let's listen to what he said uh, shortly before that. Well, gathering together today is a milestone which should always remind us of the supremacy of dialogue over conflict. So, uh, he is defending the recent crackdown, but he's also calling for dialogue. Uh, how do you view this effort by the president to reach out to the opposition? You see, it's, um, it's a bit worrying in the, in the sense that he knows what the issues are, and reaching out to an opposition and at the same time saying the opposition is the cause of the regime change agenda. See, that's a contradiction in terms. From my point of view, I'll tell you what it is. First and foremost, we have a model of contestation that is, is simply outdated in Zimbabwe. We cannot have a situation where um, a winner-takes-all approach is, is what we're having today. For example, Emerson Mnanga won 51 percent of the vote, and the opposition won 44 percent. But what you find that is a government that is formed by Emerson Munangagwa, and they've got an opposition that is outside government with no responsibility to the country right. whatsoever. So what then happens is that the opposition spends its time pulling down whatever efforts he may seem to be making. In other, wor in other words, there's a need to reform the actual model of contestation and allow the opposition to come into parliament so that they take responsibility of the decisions made by government. Angela, many of those challenges that uh, South Africa faces, uh, ones that you were talking about a moment ago, uh, are reflected in our uh, also uh, there in Zimbabwe as well. Um, what can uh, Emerson Monongagwa do to turn it around in Zimbabwe? Well, I guess uh, looking at it from the outside and not having insight into what's happening within the ruling party there, it, the best thing he can do is actually stay in the country, deal with the matters, put policy in place, that will attract investors into the country. And when that starts to happen, when he starts being honest with his uh, electorate or with the country's uh, citizens and 
he stays focused on a particular path, it's likely we'll see some changes start happening. We'll see investors starting to get more interested because as it stands right now, those investors that were keen in 2017 and last year are backing off straight away. They're not looking at South Africa either because of the uncertainty that's there. So that policy uncertainty remains. The country is endowed with huge number of uh, resources just waiting to be uh, exploited or to be developed or to be uh, value added to. So everything's there waiting to, be, to happen. But it seems like the, uh, the president is looking inwards and not focusing on what's good for the country. Anna? Lloyd, uh, of course, Zimbabwe has been under sanctions since the early 2000s. Uh, a few days ago, the Southern African Development Community, the SADC, uh, backed a call by President Munangagwe uh, for these sanctions to be lifted. Uh, they, they're saying that it's time that the sanctions ended. How much of a toll has sanctions taken on Zimbabwe? Well, uh, the sanctions have had a very devastating toll on the, on the citizen of Zimbabwe. Bear in mind, initially these sanctions were meant to be some kind of pressure to get political reforms put in place by initially the Mugabe regime and now through the Mnangagwa regime. But you find that you are imposing sanctions on an elite and it doesn't touch them, it doesn't affect them. But the person in the street, the guy trying to open a PayPal account to run a home-based business in Arara cannot do so because the, the sanctions are in place. The person trying to send money to America to buy, you know, an, an iPhone cannot buy it, although they have nothing to do with, uh, with, uh, with, um, with, with the sanctions. But the sanctions have remained an excuse by the ruling party, first before by Mugabe and now Munangagwa, to actually do what, you know, the international community, you know, would not like them to do. For me, I would say, Lifting the sanctions will go a long way into instilling some big responsibility on, on the on you know on Emerson Mnangagwa's government. Because if you bring them in, bring them into the fold, mm -hmm. for example, we've had the Commonwealth application thrown out. If mm -hmm. they had managed to bring Zimbabwe into the Commonwealth, they are, it's easier to control Zimbabwe when they're inside. They remain a rogue state if they, they're out there. And they'll blame sanctions for everything that is done. It's sanctions, sanctions, sanctions. So it's important that the sanctions be lifted so that Zimbabwe will not be able to blame or, you know, the sanctions, whatever happens. They should take, there should be a degree of responsibility on right. the politicians in Zimbabwe. Uh, Angelo, Lloyd just mentioned the fact that Zimbabwe's efforts to rejoin the Commonwealth have been rejected. Uh, is that really important? What's your view on that? Well, it's, it's, that's one approach, it's one uh, tack to take. But I mean, the point that Lloyd makes there about the sanctions is important. But the ultimate issue that uh, Zimbabwe faces is its economic policies. The sanctions have, have been used as an excuse. In fact, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, the South African president, joined in the call uh, to have those sanctions lifted. But the focus has to be on economic policy development and opening up that country's economy, not on the sanctions that are aimed at those few people in power or those few business people in Zimbabwe. So sanctions are one thing. Calling for a break in sanctions is just a misdirection. It's a smokescreen for not dealing with the real issue that the country's facing at the moment. And there we must leave it. Thanks for joining us on this edition of The Heat. I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C.